Okay, thank you very much, and, and thank you to the, um, to the group for inviting me. For me, it is a honor to be here because for us, your team is one of the reference teams. So thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to show some of our results. Okay, this is our team. We, we are located in Barcelona. We work uh, in the Spanish Research Council and our institute and our group has a similar name with <laughs> the letters changed. Okay, environmental geochemistry and atmospheric <laughs> research. Okay, here is what we believe are the challenges of, of the nowadays air quality. The first one is a policy challenge, which is what we are doing now to approach the air quality directive to the WHO guidelines, which are the protecting ones, okay? But later on, we have a number of challenges for particulate matter is still a scientific challenge because how to abate secondary organic aerosols or even secondary inorganic aerosols requires a scientific assessment, but also technological, how to eliminate ultrafine particles from the exhaust, and of course, policy. For NO2 is and ammonia is policy. We have the, the technology, we have everything, but it's only the policy. For ozone, it's scientific and, and policy because to abate ozone is another secondary pollutant and to abate ozone is also very complex because it's not only depending on the emissions but on the conditions that produce ozone. For benzoylfaparin, so it's mainly policy and a bit of technology because we cannot put filters in the in the stoves in the homes because it's the, the, the tar is condensating and stops the deficiency. And then we have the new air quality parameters. And for me, I will refer to new air quality parameters to those that in the new draft of the directive are mentioned as advanced air quality parameters. We will see. Okay? And this is science. We will see that we don't know exactly uh, how to abate that and, and policy. So my talk will focus on the particulate matter and on the advanced air quality parameters. Okay, uh, David uh, showed that organic, uh, sorry, secondary uh, pollutants make up a huge proportion. And this is the results of our study reuse in five cities from the Mediterranean. And then you can see that in the urban background, from 65 to 70% of the PM2.5 is erasing from secondary pollutants, uh, from secondary particulate matter. So it's not particles that are emitted, but the gaseous pollutant that are emitted, and in the atmosphere, <coughs> new particles are formed. So we need to abate gaseous pollutants, organic and inorganic gaseous pollutants, if we want to focus to reduce this 60 or 70% of the, of, of, of the PM2.5, okay? So when making the, the air quality plants, don't consider the gaseous pollutants different than the particulate pollutants. This is our measurements in Barcelona. We started with a detailed chemical Speciation in 1999. These are monthly concentrations. And then you see PM10 and PM2.5 have been reduced by 50% from the beginning or more. Okay? So we had a very good uh, effect of the policies. And then you can see that mineral matter decreased a lot since 2009, one of their quality plants for construction work and other sources, but especially sulfate, nitrate, and ammonia, uh, you see that were reduced drastically because the industrial 
emission directives because the large combustion plant directive and so on. So you can see how sulfate now is having here the, the shape of the summer. This is summer, okay? The only source of SO2 in the region is uh, shipping. So when we have more shipping and, and we have the sea breeze in winter, we have sulfate. But I would like to drive your attention to this. Most of the decrease of the PM10 and PM2.5 is due to the abatement of sulfate, nitrate, and ammonia. But look at what is the evolution of ammonia. This is regional background ammonia, which like in most Europe has no trend, more or less constant. But urban ammonia since 2011 is increasing a lot, and this is probably because they add blue. The ammonia slip from the new diesel cars, okay? And if we have the increase of ammonia to continue abating, abating ammonium nitrate and ammonium uh, sulfate will be difficult because they produce ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate, okay? So another key important issue is to abate urban ammonia, okay? Because we saw that these secondary are long-range transport not in Barcelona. We saw that ammonium nitrate is formed locally also, okay? And this is an important component of PM2.5. Then you see the effect of the Euro uh, standards in e elemental carbon, okay? And then you see that nowadays the levels are extremely reduced. And look at this, the, the COVID lockdown was extremely reduced. Okay, so very low. We, uh, the EC levels were reduced by five, a factor of five. So this is a very good uh, impact of the policy of, of the Euro uh, standards. But look at organic carbon is more or less flat. It's the only component that it is not reduced. So if we talk in terms of relative contributions, now this is the main component because all the others reduce by a factor of five, three, two, okay? So that is the result. In PM1, in the years 2018, 2019, we had 71% of PM1 is organic matter and elemental carbon. Uh, we saw that in, in London, in, I calculated is around 47, 40, uh, 50%. So this is the main component, organic matter. And as David showed before, most of this is secondary. It is formed from VOCs, volatile organic compounds of both natural and biogenic origin, okay? So uh, this is another conclusion, organic pollutants and especially secondary organic aerosols uh, should be reduced with the help of, of the scientific studies. So this is a study we did in, in Madrid of, on modeling. It is very common that in the urban areas, ozone is increasing, okay, in most Europe. And this is accounting for a 60% of the OH, OH radicals and 100% of the nocturnal NO3. So it means that this increase in ozone is oxidizing the atmosphere and then is helping to produce more secondary organic aerosols, okay? So this is a study of our colleague Phil Hopke from, from US. And you can see in the New York state how PM 2.5 decreased, but what they found is that the cardiovascular hospital admissions did not decrease in, in the same proportion. When they normalized the effect by microgram, they saw that in the last period, the particles were three times more toxic per microgram. So the concentration decreased, but the toxicity increased. Probably because the lower ammonium sulfate, lower ammonium nitrate, 
higher organic matter. Okay. On the other, on the other side, the the sport urban vehicles with the, uh, with this injection in the cylinder are increasing a lot the VOCs to NOx ratio. This is a study in California, but this is applying here. And this has changed the, the trends of SOA formation from traffic and now is stopped and even increasing. Okay? So our hypothesis is that we reduce SOX, NOX, and we have more ozone. So we have more radicals that were used to convert SOX and NO into uh, uh, sulfate and nitrate. So we have more oxidation of BOCs into SOA and the ratio soa sia increases. <coughs> so PM2.5 has more oxidative potential, probably. So uh, this is the challenge and reinforcing the need to abate VOCs and SOA and to reduce oxy, um, and to reduce ozone, of course. And then this is um, the, the study by Darling, Back and others in, in, the, in Nature showing that in Europe, in Southern <coughs> Europe, you see that the crustal component is dominating PM10 and the secondary inorganic aerosol in Central and Northern Europe is dominating the PM10 mass. But when we go to the DTT oxidative potential, we see that it is anthropogenic secondary organic aerosols. And in this area, the vehicular wear, what we say non-exhaust vehicle emissions, brakes and tires. So we know that oxidative potential is not explaining all health effects, but, but it's explaining part of this. So, the components that dominate the mass concentration have very little effect on the oxidative potential. Okay, and uh, that's again on the relevance of the non-vehicle exhaust uh, emissions. You see how most of the components were decreasing. This is decreasing, but a little bit. This is tin, which is our tracer for, for the brake pads. Okay, and the exhaust emission have been reduced because the technology and the standards, but non the, the non the, the, the vehicle wear. And vanadium, for us, is the tracer of the fuel oil combustion and the coke, uh, petroleum coke combustion. Since 2009, only natural gas and renewable energy is used for, for power generation, but Look at this, we have this shipping effect because the sea breeze is entering, is the only source that is burning bunker oil, the shipping. But look at this, what happened in 2020 and 2021. Vanadium for the first time disappeared. And then when we go to the statistics, you see that the tons of discharge in the harbor by shipping containers, clinker, and so on, did not change very much. But the creases disappeared. So it is the creases that are contributing most of the shipping emissions to the PM pollution in, in the city by using this tracer is very clear. OK, and now the last part is about the, the new air quality pollutants that were mentioned in the air quality guidelines in 2021, <coughs> and now these are uh, included in Article 10 and Article 7 of the new draft of the directive, okay? David mentioned. Okay, this is our project, Ara Urbans, where Imperial is, is one of the partners. And then, <coughs> but I don't know if it's by coincidence or, or what was before the EC, or, or not, but this is what, the, what we are measuring in our project and what the directive included in Article 10, okay? Ultrafine particles, particle size distribution, 
PM source apportionment, black carbon and source apportionment, oxidative potential, and then we are doing, in addition, the urban mapping of pollutants, ammonia and VOCs, and we have working package number two that is evaluating the health effects of all these uh, parameters. Okay, this is the map that we obtained and published here in December last year. And then we see this clear gradient from the Northern Europe and Northern US, very similar. This is uh, Rochester. And then we have an intermediate level. This has to be multiplied by 1,000. These are 10,000 particles in a, uh, in a urban background. And then in Southern Europe, we are uh, quite higher compared with the North and, and Central Europe. So it's behaving like PM. But what is interesting is there is a correlation between PM and ultrafine particles if, go, if we go south. But if, we, if you measure in one side, there is no correlation for a, a given side, the, 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 the time variation, OK? So if we go to the nucleation particles, these particles that are formed in the atmosphere, this depends on the photochemical reactions. And then we thought, oh, Southern Europe, because more sunshine, we will have more ultrafine particles. But this is not the case. So we saw that in Central Europe, the coal-fired power plants emit SO2, and they nucleate uh, ultrafine particles. And when the mixing layer grows, it takes the plume to the surface. Okay. And then to see how different it is. This is, for example, Athens. And you have black carbon in gray and the ultrafine particles in purple. You see that they behave exactly the same. And then the levels, this is the hourly pattern with the traffic rush hours. And then in winter, high levels of black carbon and ultrafine particles, lower in summer, high in winter. And the nucleation mode has very low concentration. However, if we go to Leipzig, we can see how the highest concentration is at midday when black carbon is at the lowest. And ultrafine particles increase in summer, and black carbon decreases in summer. So it's exactly anti-correlated. OK? So there are other sources of ultrafine particles completely different to, to black carbon. And then you see this nucleation mode, how is very high in summer, probably because this SO2 plumes. And then most of the cities are intermediate. This is the case of Barcelona, with the nucleation, this, in this case, from the shipping, from the creases in the midday, and high correlation in the, with black carbon in the other sides. But no seasonal trend and a very clear nucleation contribution. Okay. We are also determining the, the land deposited surface area for all these places with this alveolar size, which is prevailing. And again, you see the green colors in Northern Europe and the red ones in, in Southern and Eastern Europe. And then the black carbon, this is pointing to the traffic, clearly a high, higher concentration in, in Southern Europe, the middle belt here and the lower concentration in the top. And then if we go to the Aitken mode, which are the particles from five, 25 nanometers to 100, you see that practically it's the same like black carbon. This is the mode that we have most of the traffic contribution, okay? Black carbon, and I'm going to finish soon, this is the, the map of black carbon concentration in, in urban areas. You see that especially in the Scandinavian areas, the black carbon from biomass burning uh, has a, 
a relevant proportion, also in Athens, also in Bucharest, okay? And then in other areas like Madrid or Barcelona or Paris, the contribution is, is lower because it's dominated by traffic. So this is a very nice uh, success uh, history with uh, Barcelona, Granada, London, uh, this is Merrily Born, uh, um, Leipzig, uh, Rotterdam, decreasing old black carbon in the cities. But the black carbon for, from solid fuels are increasing. This is the one from traffic, and this is from solid fuels, mainly biomass burning. So the ratio uh, uh, black carbon uh, from solid fuels to traffic is increasing in all cities of Europe. So attention should be paid for the biomass burning. And finally, this is an example of the oxidative potential. We still see using ascorbate acid and DTT that PM mass is still the one with higher correlation with the oxidative potential more than a specific components. So DTT is marking a lot, the, a good correlation with iron, with arsenic, and ascorbic acid with uh, the non-exhaust vehicle tracers, manganese, copper, uh, tin, and antimony, but still elemental carbon and, and the PMS mass is around, also, uh, is, is having a good correlation. And then with the source of Osman, with PMF, what we see is that these are the main drivers of, of the oxidative potential in most of the cities. Okay, the uh, next steps inside our RI Urban project is to decompose the source contribution of these uh, pollutants. This is the example from the traffic. This is total ultrafine particles in Barcelona and this is decomposed with the contribution from traffic and the nucleation. And then you can see that the primary from traffic have a clear impact on mortality uh, of the city in Barcelona, but not uh, the other components. So this is in progress and probably in one year we will have the, the results from a lot of cities. So that's all. To wrap up, I, I will summarize saying that PM2.5 is mostly secondary pollutants, and these are very complex to abate. So it, was, it is more difficult to abate now than what we have done in the past by decreasing emission of primary pollutants. Okay, we have uh, probably an increase, increase of the oxidative capacity of the atmosphere, and that's why so uh, it will be also difficult to, to abate and we have to reduce ozone to, to abate SOA. And in most of the cities now, this is accounting for more than 50% of, of the PM2.5. Urban ammonia should be monitored and the policy focusing on that because it, it is retaining the, the decreasing of PM. And then also, road dust and vehicle wear is a key component. This is mostly in PM2.5 and PM10 more than in PM2.5, so PM10 should be still monitored. And uh, it has a lot of uh, oxidative potential. And even the, if we put 1,000 kilograms in a vehicle to, to put the batteries, probably the braking will be more aggressive and then the, the zero emissions from electric cars is not true, at least for particulate matter and for CO2. And then for the non-regulated pollutants, what we learn is that many countries use different approaches and this makes it very difficult to compare, but we have proposed already to the, to the environment uh, some uh, directions for the directive. There is an increase of black carbon and ultrafine particles towards South and Eastern Europe, uh, as other pollutants do. And uh, at a given location, this is important, 
uh, ultrafine particles and black carbon or oxidative potential are not indirectly monitored by, by PM or by NO2, so they should be measured. And the next steps will be the epidemiological studies, including using the OP as an epidemiological parameter. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and congratulations for <laughs> your excellent 30 years. That was a great, a great talk and, 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 and really impressive just how much information you could put into, into that and that you've been collecting with your colleagues. Uh, I will note that it gave me a new insight in some of the work that we're doing in, Ch have been doing in China, where as they've reduced the PM, other sources, ozone is going up now. And yeah. I wonder if some of the same atmospheric issues yeah. are at play and pro probably are. Quick a question or, or two for Xavier, back, back there. Uh, very interesting indeed. So should, on the basis of what you presented, should Euro 7 be scrapped or at least paused and substantially rethought with a focus on different pollutants based on this research? I, I don't listen, but what? Oh, uh, it, it was the question of Euro 7 and whether uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. should be scrapped or not. Nick, you know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> you are the expert. <laughs> last, last week I, I asked you a question. No, what I think um, for the cities, uh, public transport. Yeah. <laughs> and then Euro 7, I think, should go ahead, okay? But, but uh, because in the transition, we need all types of technologies. It's like the power generation. The, the best is uh, renewables, but in the meantime, we need to combine uh, everything. Yeah. Um, Audrey, yeah. Thank you very much. As always, such an interesting talk. Probably not the best to have right after lunch, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. Um, I had a, a, a couple questions. One was about, uh, so if ozone is increasing, I would think that it'd be hard to reduce VOCs, which means uh, really the, the focus needs to be on, on reduction of NOx, right? First quick question, and then the other one was: um, you said there was going to there was a decrease in uh, non-exhaust uh, um, PM. So this, is it selenium? No. no. What was your tin. marker? Tin. A little decrease. It little was decrease. Nearly constant. But I would have expected the opposite, which is what surprised me, and I was wondering why. You because vehicles are heavier. Uh, and I would expect a bit more of that. Uh, and then finally, the, you also said that there is a, a slight increase in, a, in ammonia in urban uh, environments. And I was wondering if, if your measurements are in Barcelona, if that has to do with very drunk tourists. No, no. <laughs> yes, I agree that this may contribute also. We'll start from the beginning, from ozone. Uh, it's the most complex problem about ozone because in the uh, VOC dominated urban environment, decreasing NOx can increment ozone. So we need to, to find, but we, uh, when I uh, tell this to, to the city council in Madrid or in Barcelona, they told me, oh, because we are a, a VOC dominated environment, and then I said, then reduce VOCs. <laughs> you cannot say <laughs> that, that uh, you can do nothing. Reduce NOx and reduce VOC. But with, it, with increasing green space and, and with the greening of cities, is increasing, decreasing VOC going to be visible? Yeah, but the um, maximal incremental reactivity of, of the, of the um, let's say, uh, alpha pinen, pinen compared with uh, toluene, it's, it's much higher the one from, from toluene or, or chilen. The second was. There is a decrease of tin and copper and things like that from non-exhaust uh, vehicle emissions, but the reduction may be 20%, while in the other we are talking about 300% reduction. So is the number of cars is still not <coughs> reduced as, as needed. And the ammonia, so we published this and then we published with Phil Hopkins mm. 
a, a paper uh, recently saying take care because this NO2 is decreasing, but uh, the ammonia slip from, from cars, from diesel cars can increase. And then there is, since there, there are three papers at least that they report this ammonia increase wow. in, in other cities, including China. Yeah. That, that's a very interesting, that's a very interesting uh, set of findings that Phil and others have been making, actually. Um, um, one more, sure. Javier, I think you said that the road dust oxidative um, potential was increasing. If I'm right, why? What? The? The oxidative potential of road dust. I think you said it was increasing. Yeah. So what's causing it? No, it is, uh, it is increasing copper and iron and manganese. Mm. And then when you divided the concentration, the oxidative potential by concentration or the health effects by concentrations of particles, now we are reducing sulfate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, were reduced by a factor of three. So now the concentration of copper per gram of PM is higher. It's relative, it's relative. Yeah. yeah. So. Great. Thank you very much. That was great.